and there and right where you're sitting in outer space. Let folks see the earth from a viewpoint that no one had ever seen before, but how? Typical flat screen and 3D movies about outer space were being done to death. He wanted more. He wanted a huge orb, two stories tall, that would turn on his axis just as the earth did to show the history of Spanish exploration in the new world. There was only one problem. The technology for such a production didn't exist. Not even the best special effects people in Hollywood could help. While most people would have given up, thrown in the towel, Walter Frazier decided if the technology didn't exist, then he'd invent it, and he did. It took him three more years to design the equipment and projection system and then build this theater around it. He brought his special effects extravaganza together in such a way that the Smithsonian Institution, who'd worked with Granddad on archaeological digs <coughs> here in the park in the past, saw his assistance with their own intended oversized display of Earth and its revolving moon. In fact, this is a model of the project that they sent him back in 1958. By the way, this show will not amaze you. Let me repeat that. This show will not amaze you, at least by today's standards. Even though we have just finished the first renovation on this exhibit since it was built, uh, there is no digital or computer-generated graphics or even Hollywood magic. But in 1960, when the doors first opened, it was standing room only. People were amazed. Yes, this is a museum piece. A museum piece that would be in the Smithsonian right now if it weren't so big. So sit back and enjoy the show from your front row seat in outer space, just like Granddad intended. Thank you for coming.
of international life and they are still generally referred to as the new world this globe represents our world it rotates on its axis exactly as does the earth it is 56 feet in circumference and equal in height to a two-story building although surrounded by total darkness one may stand in the rotunda and by means of black light have the feeling of seeing the earth from a great distance a multicolored planet radiating its own subdued brilliance as it slowly rotates in the darkness of outer space this globe portrays the epical events in the discovery exploration and colonization by Spaniards in the Western Hemisphere during the 16th century. By means of controlled lights, I now call your attention to the course sailed by Columbus in 1492, when he landed on San Salvador and went on to discover other islands. The second voyage of great importance was that of Columbus in 1493, when he was accompanied by Juan Ponce de Leon, the landing was made on Hispaniola. From this island, Ponce de Leon went on to the island of Puerto Rico to found a settlement and become governor of the island. Another famous voyage in American history was that of Ponce de Leon in 1513, when he anchored his three ships within sight of President St. Augustine Harbor on April the 2nd and named his discovery La Florida. On April the 3rd, he landed and took possession for Spain. This was the first formal possession taken of any part of what is now the continental United States. The fourth epical event in the Western Hemisphere was the discovery in 1513 of the Pacific Ocean by Vasco Menuez de Balboa. The voyages of Columbus led to the colonization of the West Indies, Cuba, the northern coast of South America, Central America, and Mexico. The voyage of Ponce de Leon resulted in the discovery of the Gulf Stream, led to the explorations by De Allian, Cabeza de Vaca, De Soto, and Coronada, and later to the founding in 1565 of St. Augustine by Pedro Menendez de Alves as the capital of Spain's continent of Florida, which extended from the River of Palms, Rio Grande, to Labrador and embraced all the area of the present continental United States of America. The discovery of the Pacific Ocean by Balboa led to the conquest of Peru by Pizarro, the settlement of Chile and Ecuador, the exploration of the Amazon River and the coast of California. The small number of circles on the globe show the location of some 100 of the settlements made and of the three universities founded in the Western Hemisphere prior to 1599 and are numbered in the chronological order of their establishment. The three universities founded were the University of Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic in 1538, the University of San Marcos in Peru in 1551, and the National University of Mexico in 1551, respectively. It was not until the beginning of the 17th century that England, Holland, and other European nations began to found New World colonies in Spanish territory. You have just witnessed the unique historical facts of the phenomenal discovery, exploration, and establishment of the first permanent European settlements and the development of civilization during the first century of European progress in the New World. You have followed the routes of conquest and expansion. You have seen how the centers of Spanish and Portuguese civilization were established chronologically during this greatest of centuries, which witnessed so many world-shaking events. Today, the 21 countries civilized by Europeans in the New World have provided the Old World with a continuing cultural stimulus of ideas and ideals. So, Florida, which is synonymous with Fountain of Youth, and once embraced all of North America from the Rio Grande to the frigid lands of Labrador, was dedicated to peace, and the name Florida changed to 
the united states of america